All right. Hello. Hello. Brian Miller here, author, speaker, magician, podcast host, and audio nerd. And welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. And I just got back from doing a, a live television appearance talking about the loneliness epidemic and the human connection revolution. But that is the only reason I'm telling you that is because that's I'm still in like a suit. I took my jacket off, but I I look more formal than I normally do because I just wanted I just wanted to sit down and get this video done. So walked off of live TV, came home, and here I am because. This is a video that's been requested many, many times uh, on both of my channels, actually, and I thought it's it's about time to do it. Uh, all the time, people ask, "How do I process my voice? How do what what's my vocal processing chain in post?" So I'm going to talk you through that here uh, in a short video. This will be the first of a series of videos. It may just be two videos, may end up being three, where I'm going to show you how I created the like 35 second. Um, intro piece for my podcast after the rebrand. So my podcast was called One New Person. Now it's called Beyond Networking. With that, it got a rebrand, a new a new image, uh, new music, and kind of a new tone. Even though it's the same kinds of questions and the same kinds of conversations and interviews I've always I've always had. So um, what I did was I created for it a one minute. No, I'm sorry, not even a one minute. A 35 second intro that I can just slot in to every single episode before the episode begins to make post-production easier for me on the podcast. And I'm going to show you now how I created that 35 second intro. So over here in Studio One, which is my audio uh, production software, you use whatever you've got, use the free stuff, Audacity or GarageBand, if that's all you can afford. Um, but when you can't afford to upgrade, you should, right? Use what you have, upgrade when you can. It's always my ethos. In Studio One, I've got pulled up the two tracks that ended up making up the uh, the intro, Brian and music. And then I've got the final one that's done being processed. And I just brought that in to show you. So let me show you what the final introduction sounds like and then I'll play for you the raw tracks together so you can hear how far we have to go just to get these two raw tracks to sound this good so here is the final introduction hello and welcome to beyond networking the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world if you learn to weave a network of people who trust you, who feel heard, understood, and valued in your presence, there will always be someone willing to hire you, buy from you, or work with you. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go Beyond Networking. Okay, so that is the final version with all of the processing done and all of the mixing done. Now let's take a look, take a listen as it were, to the raw tracks. This is the music and the voice, neither of which has any processing. All I've done is level the music. I've just brought the music down by 12 decibels to uh, as a starting point for balancing. Here it is. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. If you learn to weave a network of people who trust you, who feel heard, understood, and valued in your presence, there will always be someone willing to hire you, buy from you, or work with you. Okay, so I think you've got the point uh, by now. What you should be hearing, and you can go back, obviously, on the video and re-listen to the, the difference between the processed version and the totally unedited, unprocessed version that we're about to start working with. The biggest difference is my voice, the the narration. Uh, it it has a loud and it gets louder and quieter, um, which you can see here, you know, visually just see on the screen. Let me see if can I increase. So you can see that there's a lot of dynamic variation in my voice, the louder spots over here, what we call transients that are really poking out. Uh, and then you might have noticed that my voice had a little bit more of a nasal quality, more like what you're hearing right now, because I'm, I'm recording this just like live to tape, basically without any editing. 
And because I'm recording my voice simultaneously with what I'm showing you on the screen, I can't do any processing on what you're actually hearing, this, what I'm saying right now. So this nasal quality I have in my voice, I always remove that in post-processing, and we're going to do that here in a second. Uh, and then also, even though there was a, like, you, the voice was plenty loud and the music was quiet enough, there wasn't a balance between the two. They didn't feel like they fit together. They just felt like music and a voice stacked on top of it, as opposed to the processed version, which felt like it was one piece. So there are a whole bunch of things, even for something as seemingly simple as this, that I do to get that all working. And in this first video in this little two to three video mini series here, I'm going to just address the voice. So I'm going to solo the voice so all I can hear is that. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. So first things first, I usually reach for a, uh, a D reverb or a D noise or both before I start doing any processing. I probably don't need to do that in this case because in the studio, when I record in here, it's treated. There's 11 pieces of sound absorption in here. It's been balanced by a professional, as you all know, by GIK Acoustics. And so there really isn't any echo. There's no extra reverb. Uh, there's nothing to deal with. Now, so there's D-Reverb, which is designed to get rid of echo. D-Reverb plugins are really tricky. Um, they It's really hard for a computer algorithm to tell where the reverb stop, like where the echo stops and the voice begins, if that makes sense. It's kind of like if you're on the ocean and you're watching the waves, it's really hard to decide where a wave starts and stops. They blend into each other. That's kind of what happens with echo in a room, which is why even if you have trouble hearing the difference in a treated room versus an untreated room, because like on my other channel, I did that whole series of the build out in here. And in one of the videos, the before and after sound samples, there's a bunch of folks who commented and said, I really can't hear the difference. Well, the difference is dramatic and stark. But if you haven't trained your ears to be able to hear that, or if you're not listening on good enough headphones or speakers, it still matters that you're in a treated room because all those echoes, all the reverb that kind of comes in to a voice recording, it muddies up the voice. It makes it harder to hear the enunciation, right? It's like when you're in a big arena. If you're in like a rock concert and the singer, the lead singer decides that they want to tell you a story in between songs, you can't tell anything they're saying. It's not because it's not loud enough. It's because there's so much echo in the room that like the waves crashing into each other, the echo feeds on the voice and it just wipes out the clarity. Let's listen to this. And I don't think there's any reason for a D-Reverb plugin here. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking. I mean, there's no echo, there's no reverb. So we're gonna leave that alone, which is great. Anytime you can avoid de-reverbing, you're in good shape. There's a lot of digital crap that comes in with those de-reverb plugins. Plus they're expensive. Okay, next thing I look for is de-noise. Is there anything going on in the background like a, uh, a heater, my baseboard heaters? Is Was there a fan on? Is there Was there a dog barking outside, right? You almost definitely have some noise in your background. Now, by and large, again, treated room, home studio. I work from home during the day. My wife's out at work during the day. We don't have kids or pets. I'm in a quiet suburban community. I can pretty much get away without the D noising plugin, but often I will put it on there anyway, just in case there's something low in the background that I missed, just to clean it up. Denoising de plugins are generally pretty clean. They don't introduce too many artifacts unless you really push them. The thing is, though, denoise plugins, again, they're expensive. If I come down here and I go to RX, now you'll see I have hundreds of plugins. Many of these cost thousands and thousands of dollars, hundreds a piece or thousands for bundles. I have thousands of dollars worth of plugins. You don't need to have this. This is just, this is a decade of building up um, tools as an audio engineer. Uh, I'm actually looking for, here we go, RX Voice Denoise. Boom, this one. I've got the voice denoise, and you'll see I can go surgical, gentle, how much reduction I want, where the threshold, where it starts to do reduction, optimize for dialogue or music. Usually, if there's not much, if I don't hear any need for this, I'll toss it on there and really just dial it back. Gentle, low level of reduction. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. 
Okay, so now let me go to bypass. Let's listen with it off and then on. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. And on. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Okay, so not a huge amount of difference. Cleaned it up a tiny little bit. I'll leave that on. That's a step you can mostly avoid as long as you are able to record in a quiet environment. If you have fans in the background or heaters or dogs barking, then try to avoid those things. Turn those things off. Record during a quiet time, you know, if if you can, uh, and then you don't need to spend a fortune on plugins like that. So I'm going to toss that on and then I'm just going to move forward because the real key to what I do on my voice on every single vocal processing chain, I do EQ, so subtractive EQ, then compression, then if I want additive EQ, that comes after compression. So the three things are the two things I always do, subtractive EQ and compression. Sometimes I do some additive EQ after that and occasionally I use a denoising plugin or a dereverb plugin or both before those things come in. So I could have as many as five. I could have dereverb, then denoise, subtractive EQ, compression, additive EQ. Let's go for some uh, subtractive EQ. I'm going to use my favorite fab filter plugin. This is my EQ. Uh, uh, this is my favorite EQ plugin. Again, this is a very expensive plugin. This is hundreds of dollars for a single plugin. You can just use the free one that comes with your uh, your software. Uh, I'm just using this because it has a beautiful graphic interface and uh, it'll also make it easier for you to tell what I'm doing right now. So the first thing I'm going to do before I even listen to it is I'm going to do a low cut at about 80 hertz. And the reason I'm doing a low cut at 80 hertz is because the human voice doesn't capture anything worthwhile under 80 hertz. A male voice has its power in the kind of 90 to 120 range. And uh, a lot of uh, women's voices start to have their power in the kind of 150 to 180 in that range, depending on who you are in your voice could go the opposite way. Anything that was captured by the microphone underneath 80 hertz is going to be low end rumble crap that even if you can't actually hear it is there and you want to get rid of it because what happens is if you stack a whole bunch of audio on top of each other right as you're building out like a song uh, then what you end up with is all that low end rumble you can't actually hear when five or six tracks are all have that suddenly you can hear it and it muddies up the whole mix so you always cut that out if you can I usually choose to cut the low end like this in post as opposed to on the mic. Some microphones like this one has a uh, like a low cut or a low roll off. Um, a lot of the on camera microphones that we use for YouTube have that. There's no reason for that unless you're not planning on doing posts. If you're not going to do post production, click that on if you're doing dialogue. But if you're going to be doing post, I usually capture everything um, that I can, and then I'll, I'll edit it in post because it'll give me more room to play. So let's listen with this off and then on. Shouldn't be too big a difference because the stuff it's going to get rid of, which you'll see, by the way, down here, you're going to see it right down here, is uh, shouldn't be very audible, but you'll see it. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Really important note, I'm going to play that again. Listen for the plosives, the P's and B's. That's what these things are trying to avoid, right? Pop filters. Listen carefully because that low cut actually got rid of, I'm actually going to move it up a little bit. I'm going to move it up to 90 hertz. It, and I'm going to make it a little bit more aggressive at 18 decibels per octave. Right? So it's actually making it, let me show you the difference here, like six decibels per octave. It's a much more gradual slope. I really want to do a hard cut, 18 decibels per octave at 90 hertz. Listen, I'm going to do it off and then on. You'll hear those harsh plosives mostly go away because that breath of air, that puff of air is a low crap that we don't need. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Did you hear unpredictable? 
that plosive, unpredictable, it totally went away with this low cut. And other than that, we didn't lose really any of the tone of voice. So that's that's fantastic. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is look for frequencies that stick out, that poke out. Uh, you're going to hear this in the form of mostly um, a whistling sound is what you're listening for now. So this is a standard technique. I teach this in detail in my audio course, my online course, Audio 101 for Content Creators, uh, which is at audio101.com info. It's uh, 97 bucks. It's worth every penny. Uh, anybody who is uh, watching this right now and who is in there, comment below and let other folks know that it's worth every penny. Um, as I know, you know that it is. Uh, I'm going to show this quickly here, but I go in depth in the course and out of respect to the people who have paid, but I am going to show you the technique. So what you do is you take a bell curve here and you make it really, really sharp. So you, you go up to a Q of say 10, because now you have it Right, so lo lower cues are very wide, like one is very wide, and 10 is very, very steep, right? So, and then I boost the gain like 20 or something like that. So it's, we're gonna really accentuate the different uh, frequencies, really, really narrow. I'm gonna start low, I'm gonna play the clip, it's gonna play in a loop, and I'm gonna listen as I sweep up. I'm gonna start sweeping up like this. And when you hear a whistling sound, that means we've found a frequency that's way over accentuated that we want to get rid of. We're using this technique to find the frequencies we wanna get rid of. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a... Okay, do you hear right around there we're actually getting a low, low whistling sound? You have to listen carefully for that. This is your first frequency, your fundamental frequency, and that's the one frequency you never want to touch because that's the one where you get all the power. That's where the primary tone comes from in a sound source. So we're going to leave that one alone and keep going. I know from my experience with my own voice, which I edit all the time, my first uh, problem frequency is somewhere in the 250 hertz range usually. So let's see. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Okay, so it sounds like right here at about 200 hertz, I'm hearing that whistling going on. So I'm going to back this off to, say, 8. I'm going to subtract it by could be six or eight decibels. And now if you listen, we'll go off and then on. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking. Okay, so you really have to know what you're listening for there, but it's it's already phenomenally more clear. The low end doesn't have that buildup of frequencies that was getting in our way. So now I'm going to take that technique and go all the way through and find as many of them as I can up until about five kilohertz, at which point this stops, uh, this stops mattering. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking. Wow, having to listen to myself say that that many times in a row makes me, uh, makes me sad inside. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is play for you the, uh, with the entire EQ off and then the entire EQ on. I'm gonna let you hear a little bit more than just that phrase. So off and then on. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. What we've just done is using EQ alone, we've taken the voice, the raw capture, uh, which was this microphone. It's a phenomenal microphone and it works well on my voice, but then we've gone through and just removed all the problem frequencies, which makes the voice sound much more even and tonally balanced across the board. Okay, so now you have a sense of the EQ. In the next video, I'm going to talk you through the compression that comes after the EQ and then the additive EQ that comes after the compression because I have a sense this video has gone on long enough. So stay tuned for the next episode of this little mini series on vocal processing and I'll see you then. Yeah.